please uh, hear the classified story out of Asia. Patrick, please come on stage. Thank you, Marco. Um, hi, everyone. So I'm going to share with you a little bit about Asia today. Um, we have been coming to know for four years now, and I learned from Oliver Samuel last year on stage one really great lesson is that if you want to get a free ticket to NOAA, you've got to agree to give a presentation. So, so here I am. Um, <clears throat> so catch a group, just to share a little bit about our company. Um, we're based in Southeast Asia, so just to give you a little geographical lesson, that is a region of the world that focuses on Singapore, Malaysia, Indonesia, Thailand, Philippines, and Vietnam. We don't focus on China, we don't focus on India, we focus on Southeast Asia. And what, what we really like about this part of the world is that it's a very interesting online part of the world that a lot of people don't really focus on. A lot of people focus on China, a lot of people focus on India, but when it comes to Southeast Asia, it seems to be this kind of cute little anomaly where not many people look at it. We've been very fortunate over the last 15 years to launch, fund, uh, start up and be involved in four public companies, which I'll share a bit on later on. Um, <clears throat> we've got about over US $1 billion in assets now under our management um, and got offices all over the region. Here's a little bit about Southeast Asia that we find really, really, really interesting. When you look at the number of smartphones in Southeast Asia today, you're actually looking at a market that is bigger than the EU. You're looking at a market that is bigger than continental USA. So we're looking at a market today where there's 180 million people in Southeast Asia that have smartphones that are digitally connected. And what we find even more fascinating, this number is expected to be about 350 million over the next two years. So you're looking at a digital market today which has been mostly ignored by most of the investment world, but there's millions and millions and millions of people on ground using digital services every day. What we thought would be interesting to share with you guys is, so we know how many users there are now in Southeast Asia. Let's look at, let's look at how big are the internet companies in Southeast Asia. And what we've found, and I'm sure some of you guys find, in terms of market cap, there's already about eight publicly listed companies in Southeast Asia, but it, they're not as big in terms of valuations as the companies that you see in Europe and the companies that you see in the US. So we sit there and try and understand, well, we have more users than any of the other countries, but we yet don't have a billion dollar company. What's interesting about the eight largest internet companies in Southeast Asia is that classifieds, like everywhere else in the world, is the dominant category. So if you look at number two, number four, number five, these are online classifieds. Number two, Job Street, 600 million US. Four, iProperty, a company that we're involved in, just under 400 million US. iCar Asia, car classifieds, 200 million US. What you also find about Southeast Asia is that we're no different to the rest of the world. So when you look at the journey of iProperty as a public company, seven years now, you look at the journey of iCar as a public company, about two and a half years, it's following the very, very similar path that you see other publicly listed online classified companies over a considerable period of time. The dynamics are the same. It's a winner takes all. You build a great business. You build a great marketplace. You end up building a very lucrative business. And as you can see of the stock charts of these companies over their journey as a publicly listed company, you can see that sizable companies have been created and will continue to be created in this part of the world. I'll talk to you a little bit about iCar. I won't go into details, but what I will share with you um, <clears throat> is that online automotive ad spend in Southeast Asia is only 2%. You look at a market like Australia today where online automotive ad spend is already 30%. So it just kind of shows how much growth is available in our markets. But what else we find interesting is that in the US and in the Europe when they talk about online classifieds, they talk about it as a disruptive model, whereas you're going to go out there and you're going to disrupt print. What's interesting about our markets is because our middle class is growing at anywhere from 20 to 40 million people per year, we're actually not even disrupting print. The print businesses tend to grow as well. So if you look at automotive ad spend as a total category, it's growing anywhere from 10 to 30% on an annual basis. So for something like our online car classifieds business, we haven't even bothered to disrupt print yet. We're still, we're still working in a, 
in a sector where the whole pie is growing tremendously every year. What is also very, very different about our markets, and which is probably the key point that I wanted to share with you, is the online or the, uh, the automotive ad spend in our markets is highly skewed towards the new car category as opposed to the second hand category. So for someone like iCar, most of our revenue comes from someone like Toyota as opposed to the second hand car dealer down the road. And this is also what is different compared to the US or compared to Europe. Our, our, um, probably our flagship company is iProperty.com. Uh, it would be one of the largest internet companies in Southeast Asia. It recently attracted the largest single investment in a Southeast Asian internet company. About three months ago, um, News Corp and their Australian subsidiary, realestate.com.au, invested, um, oh, sorry, paid 100 million US dollars for a 17% stake in the company that was previously owned by Axel Springer. When we look at iProperty, um, you know, we're also tackling a huge market. We're tackling a market with 1 billion US dollars a year spent by property developers, real estate agents. And at the moment, only 7% of this is online. You look at the US, you look at Australia, anywhere from 30 to 50% of this number is online. In our markets, it's only 7%. So we still see huge, huge growth opportunities for these businesses. And I think this is one of the reasons why someone like News Corp felt the need to, you know, to buy a 17% stake in the company, which has actually since increased to 19.9%. And the key fact that I wanted to share with you guys is similar to the car sector, the bulk of the money spent, the bulk of this $1 billion that you're seeing being spent in Singapore, Malaysia, Indonesia, Philippines, Thailand, and so on, is being spent by developers as opposed to real estate agents. So when you're in a market where most of the money is spent by developers, the way you build your business is considerably different from the way online classifieds has been built in Europe and the US. Our product set is completely different. The focuses, the DNA of the individuals that lead the organizations are completely different as well. Now in terms of this theme of change and what's different for us, I wanted to share with you something that we've been doing and Last year at this conference, there were a few people who got up and spoke about the future of online classifieds in Europe. And a lot of people concluded that online classifieds has to move from being more than just an online lead generation business. If you're really going to continue to disrupt and continue to build great businesses, you've got to close the last mile. You've got, to, you've got to become a transaction business. You can't just be a lead gen business. You've got to take the lead and bring it all the way to the close. So what we've started to do in the last 12 months in Malaysia as a test project is actually be more than just a marketplace, more than the classifiers, we've actually tried to develop um, an actual e-commerce business. And we're proud to say that we've done a terrible job of it, we've launched a beta site, we've learned many, many lessons, but we've actually already sold 50 apartments online in Malaysia to buyers who have done all the research on the net and decided before meeting anybody that they want to buy this property. So when you see a world where we've managed to sell 50 apartments online, for us, we're very, very excited about this because not only are we excited about disrupting the traditional advertising market, when you look at the, the commission market, this is a market four times bigger and this is a market that we see p potentially ripe for disruption over the next 10 years in our Asian markets. Now what's very interesting, another venture that we've got involved in um, this year is a company called Frontier Ventures. So what we've seen is that we've seen that classifieds develops somewhat differently in the emerging and the frontier markets. As I was saying before with I car and iProperty, it's not so about secondhand car dealers or secondhand real estate agents, it's really about car brands and developers. So when you see that the business evolves differently, your customer base is different, your product suite is different, the DNA of the people leading your organization is different, then we believe that we've got a lot of great case studies from these Southeast Asian markets to take what we've learned, take what we've done right, take what we've done wrong, and bring these learnings to other great entrepreneurs globally. You know, there's something like 100 to 150 emerging stroke frontier markets in the world which are going through the same structural dynamics and structural changes that we've already been through in Southeast Asia. So hence the need to launch Frontier Ventures. We've already taken significant minority positions in the leading property portal in Pakistan, leading car portal in Pakistan. We've been involved in the leading property portal um, in the Middle East for the last couple of years now. And you know, 
we basically, we, we see a great world ahead, not only in Southeast Asia, in emerging markets, where not only will we be disrupting print, but in time to come, we'll be disrupting the actual agency business and commission business as well. And lastly, I wanted to close with, you know, every year we get on a plane for 13 hours to come to Europe. If any of you were willing to get on a plane for 13 hours to come to Southeast Asia, please look us up, please give us a call. We'd be more than happy to show you around. Thank you very much.